My name is Linda Quist. I'm from Sweden and I live in Sweden. And the reason I'm doing this is because of the times we have now and everything gets cancelled and I've been trying to do something every week and uh, now I thought well why not try live chats with a guest and the first guest I've in I have invited it's Kevin Borland. Welcome oh. Kevin, how are you doing? Good good and I think I've got it shared everywhere it needs to be shared now from my end so that's uh uh, you've got my full concentration and attention. Yeah, yeah great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I guess most of the people watching are uh, into genealogy. So uh, you are in the US and I'm in Sweden, but uh, where, are, where are your ancestors from? Um, well, I have some ancestors from Sweden, but uh, my mother's side is uh, Slavic and Baltic. So uh, her, her father is uh, half Polish or was half Polish and half Lemko. And that's... Uh, uh, an ethnic uh, Slavic uh, minority that's uh, in the Carpathian Mountains in, in Poland. We went to go see that part of the world uh, last year, and uh, her mother was Lithuanian. Um, and on my dad's side, they were pretty much early settlers of Ohio and early settlers of, uh, of, of New York City. So everything from the, you know, the Dutch Dutch East India Company people all the way to, the, or whatever, whatever that was, so the, the, the early Dutch settlers of uh, of uh, New Amsterdam to uh, the people that went out from uh, Baltimore out to Ohio to, to settle out there and uh, make farms out there. Yeah, nice. I just remember, I promised to put this on YouTube, so I pushed the record button right now. So we missed okay. a little bit from the beginning, but uh, they will get most of it. And where you are in the US and you are at right now, I'm in Florida, and actually, I, my my house is about 45 minutes away from here, and I'm visiting my mother's house because she's got a lot better internet than I do. So I was worried it was going to, you know. Yeah, and we talked about how warm you have it right now. It was like. Yeah, it's night. It was 98 degrees here yesterday, and so that's like 37 Celsius. So it's it's nice and warm outside. Yeah. Got a lot of wildlife behind me from time to time too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how did you get get into genealogy? Uh, well, two uh, kind of in two waves. Uh, first, in in high school, uh, my history teacher actually, I think it was either Mr. Harris or Mr. Walton, he made us uh, do a, a project where we had to make this poster of our family tree, and and I got to talking to uh, my great grandfather Weldon Borland, and he had all kinds of information that was interesting. Uh, and then again, when my my grandmother died, uh, I, I got to know my cousin Richard pretty well, and he, he now he's the, the the corporate secretary for. Moreland Genetics, um, and he was, he always still is, uh, heavily into uh, genealogy, and he got me going, I think, at a, at a faster pace than just a, an enthusiastic uh, uh, amateur. <laughs> yeah, so uh, did you, did you have any huge brick walls, or? Uh... Yeah, I still do. Uh, uh, one of them was uh, figuring out where my ancestor uh, Harrison Miller came from out in Ohio and uh, it, it was tough because the only reference you know to his ancestry was from some story that said that his mother was from East Virginia and his father was from was Pennsylvania uh, from Pennsylvania of Dutch extraction which could mean anything it could mean he was Swiss it could mean he was German or, or uh, you know Amish or Mennonite or who knows um, but I eventually found him and that took a long time uh, my most recent, uh, or the one I'm working on now, is uh, uh, my great great grandfather. Or I guess it's my yes, my great great grandfather. He came to the United States from Lithuania, and uh, he didn't bring his wife. I'm assuming she died in childbirth in Lithuania, and he remarried when he came to the United States. So I don't even have her name. I don't know what village she came from, uh, but I've got it narrowed it down thanks to DNA. So uh, using that, so I was able to take my mother last year to go visit her. Uh, the four villages where her grandparents came from in, in Europe, in, including where I believe she came from, even though we don't have any name or anything. You know, my mother was able to visit the uh, the church she would have went to and, uh, you know, go downtown and see all the old buildings and things like that that would have been standing when she when she lived there. Yeah, that's really, really nice when you can go back to the places where your ancestors came from and go to church and know that this is where they went every Sunday and, uh, and, uh, and see stuff that they have seen in when they were there. So uh, did you 
I guess you, you took a DNA test. Did you take that for a specific reason to, oh. to solve one of these um, brick walls or were you curious? And when did you take it? Yes, and that's the first one. And this must have been when I first came out. It was a mito, mitochondrial uh, DNA test. And that is actually the, the brick wall that I still have right now is my mother's 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 mother. And uh, unfortunately, it's because it goes so deep back in history. I only had one exact match. And uh, his, his direct line was from Eastern Europe, you know, so we'll never find, you know, the, 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 the what do you call it? The mutation must have happened, you know, thousands of years back. So I won't probably won't find my answer from that. But the Y DNA I did next. And I did that uh, pretty much just out of curiosity. And that was the time when they were doing all the population studies on the peopling of the world and things like that. And uh, just to figure out, you know, see where my direct line went through. And it, and it was, it was an interesting uh, and my closest matches were all, you know, Borland's, except there was, I think, a fielder in there somewhere, but he's probably a Borland. And uh, so it was, I was able to see the closest branch to my tree, uh, you know, because my, my Borland's went through Ireland, and it, that's like no records for the first generation or two. So we didn't know where in Scotland, you know, they were from. Uh, they were, of course, Scottish. I mean, Borland's a Scottish name, and, and we were aware that we were, you know, Scottish Irish, but. Uh, we were able to pin it to a Borland family, a larger Borland family in a specific town in Scotland. And I visited there last year also when we were in Roots Tech London. I made a little day excursion and found the banks of the waters Borland and all that. So that was fun. And then I took the autosomal, I think 2013 was the first time. Or I probably, I think I took it a little earlier, but that's when I started doing things to my raw data in, uh, in 2013 and, you know, in Excel and things like that and writing phasing and, and uh, matching algorithms and things like that. Yeah, because that, that's, that's like what you do now. You, you are, you're looking into the raw data and you uh, do funny stuff with it. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> uh, you do uh, DNA reconstruction and uh, how do you come up? If, first, tell us what, what is DNA reconstruction? Okay, well, the basic concept is that uh, along my chromosomes, you know, I could map out where each of my ancestors passed me my genes, and they'll be in blocks or segments of uh, long, long or short spans of, uh, of chromosome that I, and I if, you know, through some work and comparing it to other, other relatives, I can figure out where I inherited those parts of the chromosome from. So the reconstruction part is, let's say we're cousins and I take the part that I inherited from say Harrison Miller and, and if you're his descendant, we figure out what parts you inherited from him. And you know, if a hundred people do that, then we can, you know, even though he was born in, the, in, the, in 1818, we could still get a pretty big, good picture of his genome if, if enough people participate. And uh, that's the basic idea. Yeah, and, and how do you come up with an idea that Hmm, I think I'm going to do some DNA reconstruction and I'm, I'm going to make tools for, for do it. How do you come up with an idea like that? Very, very gradually. <laughs> I started in 2013, but I didn't come out with the actual tools like for the public until I think maybe 2018. Uh, I think that's when I, when I got my first beta testers and decided I was going to. But first I started with, uh, you know, I, I was inspired by Dave Pike's tools, if anybody's familiar with those. I, I, some of them are still on... Uh, on GEDmat for various things. Um, and they did some, some phasing. I came up with my own, I never actually saw how they work. So I came up with my own tools that did the same thing. I did it in Excel and that, especially back then, you know, the computer would be like spinning and spinning and smoke coming out of it because of all the calculations, but it worked. And, uh, and I came up with an algorithm that does something similar to like what Timber does on Ancestry and things like that too, and, and matching. So, and this is over the first couple of years when I, when I first got my data back and and then, you know, I tested other family members and then I said, my cousin Richard is, you know, really into genealogy. So, you know, I think he really pushed, uh, pushed me and uh, challenged me on this. He's like, well, uh, I'll get some tests for some more family. Can you add them to the analysis? Until the next thing you know, we're, we've got like a 28 kit analysis from, from that one side of the family where we share a common ancestor and we're reconstructing people from like before the Civil War, uh, which is like the 1860s in the U.S. So... It gradually, and you know, and as you know, as the need for you know, it could no longer be done in Excel. If I were to do a 28 kit project in Excel, I'd be doing it until I was 200 years old. So I had to come up with tools, you know, organically to to do the different things that I wanted to do, and uh, 
trying to automate as much as possible because it's a lot to keep track of too. You got a lot of intermediate kits and things like that. And it's easy to get lost if, if there's not a, a, a significant amount of automation. So I, I guess this a uh, lot of programming. Do you have a programming background or or uh, or or? A, a, I don't. A I, no. <laughs> <laughs> no to both. Uh, but I, I was a physics major. I, I went to MIT, uh, so I do have a scientific background. And and I did have to do my thesis in. A, I, I made wrote a program in in a, you know to model a. a a specific uh, set of uh, particles and things like that. So I have some background in it. I took a class so that I could even do that. You know, I, I took a class at, at BU, I think, on a, uh, on algorithms and things like that. But but I've been doing it as a hobby since then. And it, a lot of you'd be surprised, but a lot of even the actual equation, equations from physics apply to to this, which is kind of surprising. But uh, equations that for applying a potential over a quantum well, it's they it's you wouldn't think so but they actually also govern uh whether or not there's going to be you know multiple crossovers on a span of dna between you know two known boundary conditions you know you got a part here that's from uh, your father's father and another one here that's from your father's father what you know how to predict uh whether there's likely to be a flashover between there where there's going to be two recombination points these, these are equations that i learned in physics that just magically apply for some reason but no, that's amazing, really. The, the same rules ap applies to, to to many places, and for totally different reasons. But it's just the yeah. math; you know, the, yeah. it's a common mathematics. Yeah, and uh, so you started doing this programming, and I think you made a, a PC verse, version first. And uh, the first time I actually saw you was on YouTube because I was looking into the Lazarus tool, and uh, I. <laughs> looked on YouTube to see if there were any tutorials, of course, and I, I found you had done a, a whole series of uh, of uh, instruction uh, videos on how to use the, this tool. But now you're making your own tool, and uh, tell us a little about that. Okay, so it's 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 a suite of tools, and there's maybe ten or so tools that were originally in the PC and the desktop version, and they're all still there in in what's out now, which is the the web tools. And now they're tied to a database so that you could upload, you know, your kits and you, you can get matches and things like that. But you could also use uh, multiple kits that you've uploaded or in conjunction with kits that you match uh, to to reconstruct segments. And you're sort of adding them to the segment library. So you, you can, you know, if you and like I said, if you if you were my cousin through Harrison Miller, say I can invite you to my project. And you know, without anybody else being able to do anything with your DNA necessarily, we'd be able to, you know, create one profile for Harrison Miller based on our uh, using using the system. And the system is basically you got a phase. So it, in order to reconstruct, you have to you have to get the DNA into a state where it can be reconstructed. So you have to use some relatives to sort of unzip the two different strands of uh, DNA. And then uh, you have to identify pretty much, you know, where, you know, where you inherited uh, each pieces of those strands from and that spans a chromosome. And then you basically merge them together, you know, between the different people who also inherit spans from, from the same individual until you get a more complete picture. And the, there's a variety of tools for doing that, including some basic workflows, uh, such as, you know, missing parent and, uh, uh, if you can, if you have a child, you can you can phase your DNA using that using that child and uh, workflows uh, that are, get a little more complicated too. I'm working on automating uh, visual phasing uh, directly into the program too, and that's not all the way there yet. Yeah, because uh, uh, the automation is uh, is that's what you're working on. So so it will be easier for us that doesn't have the the deep knowledge and. Uh, your tools will help us in uh, in a workflow, and uh, how to how to uh, put it, put it all together and get a new profile. I guess. I, I do have a sample of some of that automation uh, queued up. If if you'll allow me for a minute. Here. Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, and I'm going to try to share my screen. I see the button here, and I realized what I did wrong when we were practicing. Okay, and uh, yeah, and if if anyone has question for uh, for uh, Kevin, just write them in the in the 
Facebook and I will try to look after it. So, yeah. So this is, and, and this is, this, this, the tools themselves are, are, are free, except for I think one of the tools. Uh, the subscription on my site gets you like projects and things like that. Um, so this is a project we're looking at here and they're each different types of projects. I have smart projects. Uh, so they have different tools. And the first thing anyone does if they do subscribe should be to create a creeper type project. The creeper is like our uh, virtual assistant. So when you first, uh, start out with it. And this is kind of a, I, I, I reset my creeper for this demonstration, uh, although I skipped a couple steps. It'll start with very basic, you know, for Hello. me. I'm the creeper. I think I've found a way to increase the quality of our reconstructions. I've discovered a donor that has tested with more than one testing company whose kits haven't been merged for optimal resolution. Please advise me if I have your permission to merge the factory kits associated with this donor profile. So it'll walk you through the, even the most basic steps. In fact, even before this and the part I skipped was like, it'll be uh, blunt too. So if, you, if, if, if it finds someone in the database, it'll be like, I found someone I think is your father, you know? So <laughs> be prepared, but the database isn't that large yet. It's growing. But, uh, and uh, let me take you to a little more advanced stage than that. And that's sign out. Here we go. So on the home screen, most people just have these, which are like basic... Uh, projects but the if you start creating your own projects like i have my creeper project down there i'm going to go to my mother's reverse phasing project now the creeper is actually calculating this live you know what it thinks the next step to do is based on not only it, it so it has to do it live because for example if you uploaded something else to the database it may it may have a new step for you. It may be able to do more than it would have before. So it reevaluates what it thinks the next thing it has to do, not only based on what's in your inventory of DNA, but also if someone else has by chance uploaded a, a close relative to you or something like that. Okay, so um, now I go to the creeper and it's gonna tell me something different to do that's specific to this project. And this is a project where I wanna reverse phase my mother's DNA using the DNA of me and my brother to create grandparents. So click. time for some fun with colors. I found a kit link to our project that requires chromosome mapping. Let's use the Borland genetics here mapper tool to create a phase map that we will later use as a mask for segment extraction. So you get to make some choices, you know, let's map it. No, I already did this myself. So that's for people that, you know, we're using the desktop tools or the non-subscription version if they want to, you know, add that to the project later without having to redo all the steps. Uh, or no, I don't want to is a perfectly valid option too. You may not be interested in this, this particular reconstruction, but if you put less map it, it will, you know, take you to a screen where you see all of the people in the database that match this person on which chromosome. It's not that different from, uh, the, the maybe like a segment search sort of thing on, on GEDmatch, although it's not. It's specifically for reconstruction. This is going to be fed. This is not for. This is not the end result. This is now you hit go, and it goes directly and creates for you. First, it asks you, you know, which side of the family they're on, but it already knows most of them, um, based on some questions you've answered when you're setting up the creeper. Uh, proceed to the results. Download your phase map. And then if you go to, say, DNA Painter, uh, create, oops, create a new profile, demo. And I'm doing this in real time. This is not pre-recorded. <laughs> Import segment data. Oh, I don't know, seven centimorgans, say, for minimum. Uh, choose a file. There's the file we just downloaded. Import the file, and there you go. It maps uh, in pink maternal, uh, you know, in blue paternal. I don't think there were any paternal relatives in the system yet. And it empty segments are black, so that there aren't any matches on those segments yet. Um, and green are ones that are unresolved that you have to, you know, take a look at yourself. So if I took a look at one of the unresolves, it'll say, oh, Felix Cessny. Well, I know that my, my mother's father's side of the family. So I could edit the segment and just flip it over to 
uh, you know, paternal and make yeah. a group. So that's that's the idea, but it's it's basically like speed chromosome mapping and the kind of automation likes that make these projects go very quickly. Uh, in theory, I'm still working on them and there's still a lot to go. So please don't like subscribe to my thing and expect it to be like all done in a day. It's 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 a it's a work in progress. Yeah, I like that speed chromosome mapping. <laughs> All right, I'll get stop sharing my screen now. That, I think that's my only actual demonstration, but I think you get the idea. Yeah, and I, I, I think this is, uh, I think uh, this DNA reconstruction, I think it's super interesting and I wish I had more time to, to work with it because I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's amazing that I can reconstruct my grandmother's DNA or, or her parents' DNA and, uh, and uh, put it together and, and uh, get like a profile. I think uh, it's amazing what we can do with, uh, with DNA and uh, how you even can come up with an idea that, uh, well, I test people and now let's uh, reconstruct for older profiles and uh, older re relatives that's uh... you know what's nice is the creeper also tells you what it's doing and why it's doing it as it's going along typically so you kind of become an expert in the subject matter and really learn a lot about dna generally even though it's doing some of the thinking for you in terms of what to do next and you know what what can be done and exactly who can be reconstructed with a given set of resources um, it's teaching you along the way so you can do it yourself and you know you could do it without the creeper you know once you know what you're doing yeah i think that's uh it's uh really great and uh, and, and the help as well so uh you were at uh you were i met you in in london at rootstack and that's what was when we just released uh, the web tools i think and then uh, you were in rootstack now this year as well and i think that was when you released creeper right uh, yes, correct. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's when I released the, the Creeper and the projects and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I, I recognize a couple names from both of those, London, when you were announcing who people that were joining this uh, conversation. So hello to all the people that I met at both of those uh, yeah. events too. I look forward to more conferences once we're able to do that again. But in the meantime, it's great to have stuff like this, you know? Yeah. Now let's see, we've actually got uh, uh, a question. Okay. Uh, it's Anna Karin who asks, can I use my cousin's DNA to reconstruct an ancestor's DNA? Yes, assuming you have their permission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you have to have their permissions and you have to have the raw files or they have to upload the raw files. Yeah. Right. And, and that's one of the things about the projects is try to avoid having to, you know, because there's some people, if you don't know them, they're going to say no if they, if they you, you know, if you ask them for their raw DNA but they may just upload it to a third party site and then you can join a project where that's committed to whatever your goal is, you know, reconstructing that common ancestor. Yeah. But generally to use just about any of these tools, you're gonna need more than one DNA kit. These are all, almost all multiple kit analysis types of tools. Um, for, if, if for nothing else, because you, you, the first step of the process is phasing. If you have no one at all to phase against, you can't do anything. Although, most people have at least someone in the system they match. I, and I say most, and I, I feel bad because I see a couple people upload every once in a while and I see zero matches and it's just because they're from a part of the world where testing isn't popular, but they will soon. Yeah, because because like like when we look on our match list, the first the first selection we need to make is like, is what's from mother's side and what is from dad's side. Yes. So it's same yeah. with DNA reconstruction. We have to, this is from my, my mom's side and this is from my dad's side. And it goes back generation by generation like that, so that it, there are certain advantages to doing that. For example, filling in gaps between the matches, like using that math equation that I mentioned earlier and things like that. And it does that automatically. Yeah, let's see what other comments we've got. I thought I saw another question as well. Uh, oh, we got a question from Max. She asked, what other projects, projects are you currently involved in? Well, funny you should ask, Max. I am also on the board of, uh, of Mito Y DNA. And I, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to plug that to you. That's a nonprofit organization, and it's a uh, database for uh, mitochondrial and, and, and Y DNA results. And that you could go to mitoydna.org to uh, find out more information about that. And, and please upload, your, you can comparative, uh, compare your uh, results to people like me who tested years ago in Ancestry, and I hadn't retested my mitochondrial DNA, for example. I, I, I just instead uploaded it there so people can compare if they would like to. 
Yeah, and Anna Karin says she doesn't have any siblings to take DNA from, but uh, cousins will do. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, it's going to be better the, the closer the, the related. I mean, so if you have a single fifth cousin or something, you're going to get, you know, it'll still be, uh, you know, if as long as you match that person on some site, it, you'll still be able to add it to the, you know, maybe one or two segments to the segment library. But if it's a first cousin or an aunt or uncle or something, you're going to get more of your target ans desired target ancestors. Yeah. But cousin's fine. You don't need three siblings or even one sibling for this. I, it helps, but you don't need, they're not necessary. It'll figure out which tools to apply based on with you know what your unique configuration of resources it is and it's learning i say learning it's not true artificial intelligence it's sort of like light artificial intelligence the creeper but it's learning different patterns too so it's it as far as and, and it's learning in the sense that i'm teaching it as as it goes along and it's a it's a process so it recognize it's recognizing more and more complex patterns as time goes on as uh, what to do next based on your resources. Yeah. And we've got a comment from Rob Wharton. Uh, cousins from first through fourth would also be helpful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we've got another question here from Niklas. I'm looking for my grandfather's grandfather. He's unknown. I have seven descendants tested. I have to try I have to try this. What do you think? Yes, and uh, there is an issue of late. These kits used to be compatible, the output with uh, GEDmatch, and they are not right now. And uh, I haven't really had a chance to uh, talk to them over there and see if there's a solution for that. I'm hoping there is, but if, if not, our database is growing as well. So yes, in terms of being able to reconstruct that grandparent, maybe in terms of being able to upload that reconstruction to other sites, and, and we'll see if we could find a home for them other than in my database. And if not, my database will grow. And uh, I say my database, it is no longer, I have some news, it's no longer just my database. Well, it was never was, it's everyone's, but but uh, Borland Genetics is now a uh, corporation as of last month. So I had no succession plan until now, and especially during, you know, the time like this around the world where, you know, diseases and things are going around. Yeah. It's good to have something like that. Plus, I'm getting older, of course, and I may want to retire, and, you know, eventually. <laughs> yeah. uh, so... We, we have a corporation and, and, and like uh, I think I mentioned before, my cousin Richard that got me into uh, genealogy, he's on the board and, and also a, a professor from uh, Brown University is uh, John, uh, John Gennady is his name, is, is, the, is the third board member. And we just getting started and I've, I just sent them a debriefing on how everything works and all my secret trade secrets and things like that. So. Nice. There is a process for continuation, at least. Yeah, start. sounds great. Because because that is is if um, if you are alone and you're developing all these tools, and then there's there's no one to take over. So that that is great. Right. And we have a question from Jason who asked if you can explain how the dark side tool works. Yes, and uh, that's kind of uh, I don't think there's any other similar tool on other websites, at least not that I'm aware of. Um, since everyone has two copies of each chromosome. Uh, so you, let's say, again, you're my cousin through this Harrison Miller guy. Well, on the opposite side of my chromosome, I know since that's my father's side, you know, I must, I must, uh, you know, I necessarily the opposite copy came from my mother. So I could use you not just to create a partial uh, reconstruction of Harrison Miller, our common, our common ancestor, uh, but rather I can also use your DNA to unzip mine and get that other side so that I can, you know, use that, that part is now also isolated and I can figure out who I got it from and I can say maybe reconstruct part of what I, my Lithuanian ancestors. Um, so it's, a, and that it, 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 there's a tool called the dark side tool that's in this and in the desktop version, although I'm encouraging people to use the web tools. Uh, and that, that will, wherever you match a person on all the different segments, it'll, it'll create, you know, it, you can decide which of your matches you want to pick and it'll choose the opposite, uh, the opposite side. So you, you could, for example, tell it all of your paternal aunts, the cousins, uh, and then it'll automatically create a kit for your mother based on everything on the opposite copy of that chromosome. Yeah, okay. that, 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 that's that's because we know how A binds with T and C binds with G, and and that's what that's why we know all these things. I think we have one question here. Um, uh, what? 
I get from these tools if I have my wife's raw DNA, my DNA, my wife's nephew raw DNA. Uh, we have identified lots of DNA matches on several sites. What can I get? What can I get from these tools if I have my wife's DNA, my own DNA, my wife's nephew's DNA? What what okay. uh, what relative could you <laughs> like uh, reconstruct? Okay, so well, assume I guess from that scenario, you're the only person you're not related to anyone, in uh, you know because the, the other two are your wife and your wife's nephew, right? Yeah. So the wife and the wife's nephew, so someone and their aunt, uh, they can create a partial reconstruction using the dark side tool to get part of, let's say, it's your maternal aunt to create part of your father, uh, you know, part of the the nephew's father. Uh, you can. So an aunt, I guess, would if it, assuming it's a full aunt, then it would be related on both sides of the family. So you really uh, probably wouldn't get a ton with with just that, um, unless you could also get people to who are your cousins to also upload or to share their data with you somehow. Because um, ideal, okay, best case scenario, parent-child pairs. They're always the best place to start because you could basically unzip your you know, phase your, your DNA down the entire length of your genome. So regardless of whether you're the parent or you're the child, a parent-child pair is always the best to have. Uh, next best is siblings. And although they, you know, have FA, FIR regions, which mean, because where they inherited, uh, you know, common DNA from both parents at the same places, there's still so much, so much places on their, uh, on their chromosomes where they only, you know, match on one side where you can phase each other. Uh, and there's a process called visual phasing that makes makes it easier to, to do reconstructions using that. Uh, and then the next best would be relatives that are related to you only on one side of your family, if, assuming you're trying to reconstruct so your ancestry. Sorry. No problem. Or, I'm, try, uh, I'm trying to, to see all the comments and I, I figured I'd try my phone, but then I heard the, <laughs> heard the yeah. Sorry. So you want people that are really closely related to you, like a parent child or siblings. And in the event uh, that you have other relatives, you're looking for ones that are related to you on only one side of the family. Although I have some double cousins that I was able to get some interesting information out of. So not always a uh, Depend it whatever uh, set of resources the, the creeper will also tell you what what is probably a good uh, order to do things into. So if you did upload them, it would tell you if it finds some way that, that it'll it'll give you you know walk you through relative by relative who it thinks it can reconstruct. Yeah, and uh, how many relatives have you uh, been able to uh, reconstruct, and what what's the one that is furthest back? like 80 <laughs> a, a, a lot um 80? so yeah like 80 uh -huh. okay that, that's like <laughs> that's like a whole tree almost yeah yeah, yeah. If, if you look like you know on GEDmatch, you can see the the little thing where if you have dna linked to someone if you look at like my ancestors it's funny because it's like goes all the way back like the 1800s and they all have little dna symbols next to them because i've done you know all of them that i you know, back until the early 1800s. And some of them are pretty decent reconstructions too. Like we did one for my uh, uh, ancestor, Eloise Lindauer, and she was, I think from the 1850s born. And uh, it's it's pretty full. I mean, it's not 100% coverage, but it's 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 more than what you'd expect. I mean, she has thousands of matches just like as if she'd test herself. Okay, that, that's, uh, I think that's so amazing. I think it's it's super cool. So if someone's watching right now and they haven't uh, gotten into DNA reconstruction, what, what is the first step they should do right now or right after we, not now, but uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes when we're done here, what should they do? First of all, I mean, test all of the people in your family that are getting older because that information is totally, totally valuable. valuable. The farther you start out going back, you know, the farther back you'll be able to go at the end. So test the older people in your family. And uh, then, I mean, the, the next thing would be to, you know, upload either, I mean, I'm sure my program won't be the only one in the future to, to, to be able to do this thing. But uh, for now, I think 
my tools are pretty much the only complete solution to the problem. So upload them to my site, or if it's an issue, you know, there is a PC version as well, although it's not supported that well. It's in a different programming language, unfortunately. Um, but just upload and uh, if you already know a lot about genetic genealogy or, or, or a bit about it, you know, you could just go ahead and use the tools themselves. They're all, they're all free on the site. Or, or if you want to subscribe, you can have access to the Creeper, which is a work in progress that, that should, uh, right now, I think in, in every workflow, it takes you up through chromosome mapping. So beyond that, it's still in progress. So count as many people as you can and upload to uh, boardongenetics.com is the site. Oh, right? yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the place. It's the place to put them. And um, I think uh, perhaps you could tell us something that most people don't know. If we be done with a little bit with the DNA reconstruction and tell us something that most people don't know about you. About me? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I spent a lot of time, especially when I was younger, doing adventure travel. So I've been to some interesting places and some interesting situations, I guess. Um, I, 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 I caught malaria while trying to ascend uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, for example. I uh, backpacked slash hitched rides across Venezuela to get up to Angel Falls and things like that. And I've been out in like the Western Sahara in, in nomadic tents and, and uh, Lots of other things like that. I've been outside Aung San Suu Kyi's house in Burma, and uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of things that it's pr probably if, if I was still doing those things, which I don't do very much anymore, it's probably good there's a succession plan for these tools. <laughs> 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 yeah, and um, next week I'm, I'm going to have another guest here. But I'm not sure who it's going to be yet, because uh, if, if anyone's looking, sure, just write a comment that uh, I want I want to join you. Uh, this is uh, the first time I'm doing this, and uh, Kevin was very brave to to be the first <laughs> one out, I think. But I think it's been really nice uh, chatting like this and talking about different tools and uh, brick walls and, uh, and and stuff like that. So. Next week, I'm going to have another guest, and I figure that you will uh, pass along a question that I will ask that guest. Okay, whoever this guest may be, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I was going to say, what what got you into uh, in, into either uh, genealogy or genetics or genetic genealogy, whichever uh, type of guest you may happen to be, and uh, what I guess what inspired you to uh, to get into this, and why are you doing it? What inspired you? That's a great question. What inspired you? Great. So, I'm into tech. I like tech. So, what, uh, uh, an app you like to use? <laughs> when, What's what, that app? Uh, yeah, well, what, some, some app that you use that uh, when you do all this programming, I guess you have to organize it very well and, and uh, uh, like to do list and um, yeah. What, My what to do, do you list. Use? Yeah. I, I use Trello a lot and okay. for this specific purpose. Um, it's I, I want to have an in and I've started working on an in-system sort of uh, like in my own program where there's a help desk type of feature and also an organizational type of thing, but it's not ready yet. So for now I'm using Trello and I really like Trello. I use it for other things too. Um, I use it for my music projects as well because I, I produce you know music as a hobby. Yeah, uh, you produce music music as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but we can find that. Trello is awesome. Yeah, yeah, Trello, great. So I think that was uh, it. We have been going on for like forty-five minutes already. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it was really nice having you here, Kevin. And uh, if people want to uh, get in touch with you, get in touch with you, where do they contact you or or? Well, my name is Kevin Borland, and I'm like everywhere on the internet. So if you search my name, you'll find like all kinds of contact information. But I, I my, most most frequently I'm on Facebook. Uh, I don't tweet really. I have a Twitter account, but if you like tweet something to me, I don't even know how that works. I probably won't ever get it. So Facebook is where I'm most present. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I use my regular name. It's got a picture of me. I, I think 
you've got several to choose from depending on your interest. I have, you know, a music page, I have a DNA page, I have, you know, a DNA group specifically for the tools and I have my personal page if you're a friend, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah, you have you have a special group uh, group for uh, the tools as well. If you're interested to know more about the tools, then uh, you can join the group. But the moral of the story is I'm real easy to find, especially on Facebook. Yeah. So let's see, let's see what we have here. Uh, oh, roll fast. Um, what's next to be released in the Borland genetic suit? Uh, more, more steps for the creeper. In fact, I have already the next next steps for reverse phasing pretty much ready to roll out, except I discovered an error. So I've I've got to uh, it work. It's it's like it doesn't crash, but it's missing a it's missing something. So I want to go back and troubleshoot and make sure it's functioning 100% properly, and then that'll be the next thing to roll out. And then I'll make the equivalent step for visual phasing as well because I'm developing both of those in tandem because they're different, but they're similar animals as far as like what types of steps there are. So I can recycle a lot of code, I guess is what, what you call it in computers. So, so uh, that's the, the next step is going further with the creeper. Yeah, sounds great. And uh, uh, Robin says, very good program and interview. Thanks for having it. Thank you. Yeah, it's been fun, I think. So uh, hopefully I'll do this again next week. So. Thank you very much, Kevin, for doing this. And uh, everyone's watching. Thank you for coming in and watch. And uh, have a nice day or evening here in Sweden. So uh, talk to you later. And thank you for helping me get the word out. Thank you very yeah. much. Bye-bye. <laughs>